Beer Fridge Podcast. Hello and welcome to another weekly episode of the Beer Fridge Podcast. Real beer, real breweries, real opinions. As always, wherever you listen to this podcast, make sure you're following and hit that ding a ling a ling to be notified of all the latest episodes. Uh, my name's Gavin, I've got my usual drinking buddies. I've got Cal, I've got Gilroy, I've got MD. Good evening, gentlemen. Hello, hello. Good evening. From the sanctuary of my COVID cell. Ah, uh, that's... Shit news, mate. Get COVID for? What did they get COVID for? I didn't mean to get COVID. Yeah. That's just that's just pish. I feel like I did it on purpose. One hundred percent pish. I think I sound pretty good. Nobody gets COVID anymore. COVID's Nibdy. like so twenty twenty one. When it is just no trendy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I've got the, I got the I start on trendy. I got the weaker version. I go. I'll get Omicron. Let's be honest. I think uh, that's the one that you want if you're getting it. So I suppose uh, you want. Just... The karma of COVID. Aye, the karma. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Om- Omicron's like full butter chicken. Like it's, it's, <laughs> it's been wafted with a bit of seasoning, basically. <laughs> Can we have? I'll just have uh, the uh, chicken Maryland, please. Yes, indeed. Right. <laughs> just um, be happy that you're down south and you get what f- five days or two days. Five minutes worth of self isolation, and then you're all right. Aye, the daft thing is so like. Parties at number 10 continue. Aye, they tell you five days, and then the app that they tell you to use tells you you're, you're meet yourself isolated for seven days. I'm like, am I, am I five days? Am I seven days? Am I ten days? Fuck knows. But... Keep quarter now. <laughs> keep quarter now. But aye. Aye, isolation. But it's all good. All good. Still able to do this podcast. Feeling good, feeling great. Uh, I can still taste and smell, so I think I can anyway. You can. We'll think. We'll see. We'll see. Let's get a big bad boy stout in front. Let's of you get these big. See. And oh, you know what? That's probably the best gauge. Actually, I might actually dig one at the beer fridge, and um, that will that will definitely tell me. Um, can I uh, just is. jump in with a happy first of February? Yeah, welcome to <laughs> fucked up February. Today. Fucked up February. So, I've been <laughs> holding on to this just to do it on the podcast, so we get here we go. And uh, it's a car attendance. Oh, there it is. Hundred percent no tenants. <laughs> it might taste like tenants the way it's gone, but who knows? Uh, what is it though? What was that? You may as well start off what we're drinking by telling us what you're drinking. Well, I've um, this is um, the the Hell's Bells Lager from the my bruiser box um. from January. Um, so this is the uh, Cardiff um, brewery, which is Crafty Devil Brewing. So the Hell's Lager, four percent. I thought at the end of the day, I've have done so well and stayed off at oil for a whole month. I should start with a Lager. Um, so. I would have thought you would have went boys deep with like a triple. Nah, just e- easing easing myself in. It's we'll fucked, up, it's fucked up February. Why would you just ease yourself in? That'll be like two. This will be like three gulps and it'll be gone. So then I can hit the Westie. I've got sitting beside me. Oh. So, yeah. Sounds good. Well, have a wee, have, savour it, mate. Don't rush it. Um, Cal, what are you starting off with, mate? Speaking of savouring, um, I've been nursing this for the last half an hour, <laughs> waiting to get on because I really wanted to talk about it. And uh, this is from my January Bruiser box as well, from the Kernel. Um, and it's their table beer, 3%, um, hopped with Nelson. Um, wow. Um, it's absolutely stunning. It really is. It's, it's fresh. Um, it's got a lovely, sort of zingy, um, aroma. Um, you're getting a fabulous sort of body. Um, those grape, sort of white grape, um, zingy, sort of Chardonnay flavours that you would expect for Nelson. Um, and it's it's finishing well, a nice sort of pleasant bitterness as well. Pretty hazy, um, even though it's light. You can see it's, it's uh, you can see that it's really light, but it's got a lovely haze. Um, but the the lightness totally belies the the body that you're getting with it. It's it's really really. Um, Took me by surprise um, how how substantial it is, um, and uh, yep, yeah, absolutely superb, really really nice. I think, I think that's it's... the biggest compliment you can get. Is it not for a table beer that it's substantial? Aye. I mean it's three percent about I, but that's <laughs> it. And I mean I think Gav's Gav's got to be a new segment for me um, up his sleeve. We can talk about yes. later, so I'm I'm maybe I'm come back to this one. Um, you can you can <laughs> you can do as many as you want in the new segment. But I think um, with that with the kernel table beer, it's every, every kind of brewery you talk to, and when you talk about table beers, it, the kernel is the A one star. Um, 
all, of it all. Like everyone kind of wants to be as good as the kernel in terms of table beer, and um, from that description, you can tell why. Um, and I have to be honest, I was so impressed with the box as well. Um, ten beers I got in the box. It's ten three thirty ml bottles, mm-hmm. but it was ten different beers. Nice. So, so there wasn't a doubler. Um, there, 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 I think there was maybe a couple of pails. Um, in there, but they, they were all they had different hot bills, so so not the same beer. Um, yeah, I'm really really impressed, and I think a, a three thirty ml. If you're getting ten of them, I think that's a great sort of a taster box. Um, right. I know I know that that Kernel do have bigger bottles and and and, and stuff available, um, but I, I I was really impressed with that, um, and I got a nice wee bag and stuff with it as well. It was great. A, wee, a wee tote bag. A wee tote bag, mate. Yep, no, wee tote bag. Wee, wee tote bag. Nah, maybe a wee freebie though. It's, you know what? I'm I'm not gonna lie. I am a sucker. See for the freebies. See when you you're on the Bruiser website and they're like, oh, you get a free this and you get a free that. I'm a like, glass. I'm see see if a brewery's got a glass, I'm right in it with that. I oh. am all about it. Get me in there, sucker for a glass. Uh, myself, I am drinking to start off. I've had one of my dig brews. I've got another one in a minute, but I'm going to um, officially start off Bye. with with um, uh, Overton and their beer, formerly known as. Which is seven percent IPA tribute warning. Um, wearing cheap sunglasses, sitting by the lake, soaking up barbecue, stoking up the barbecue. Excuse me, listening to some free birds, enjoying the sun and the crazy hot weather, letting it all fade away with proper American hop juice, the way New Englander would do it. Wicked good. I would say American hop juice is not a good thing to be written on a side of a can. I don't know. Uh, yeah, sounds a bit sussy, but um, Calypso, Amarillo, Citra, and Simcoe. Um, lovely, nice kind of thick body. Not overly thick. Um, lovely body and aroma is fantastic. Um, it gives you everything that you want from an Overton beer, but at the same time, just the IP, it's just a really good standard of beer. Um, I'm gonna have to take another gulp because I've forgotten the rest of my taste notes. But see that sniffing in them, or you can. Oh I. That's cracking. That's all that's all that needs to be said about that. It's cracking. Lovely. It's over I feel but I feel I always feel bad, right? See when I have an overtone beer and I big it up, then I'm like that's really good. i I'm obviously I'm gonna say that. But it is a good beer. It is a good beer. Really, really nice. And I it, I don't think all my senses of smell and taste have, have disappeared. Um but I reckon I, I do reckon a stout would probably sort that out. I might dig one out. I might dig one out. Go, Roy. Um, so I'm having, <clears throat> again, it seems like the evening for January boxes for Bruiser. So I know. I've opened something from my uh, Alpha Delta box that I got. Um, special for Alpha Delta. I'll describe it and then you might see why it's special. So Alpha Delta, I've got um, known for really sessionable beers, not. Um, so this is called. <laughs> <laughs> Zevza. Um, Zevza. Zevza. X E V Z A. I'm so I'm going with Zevza. <laughs> or, or Evza. Zegz Zegzva. 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 There's an X at the beginning, so you can just the X means just pronounce it however the fuck you want. Sounds like they drank half a dozen of them before they named the beer. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't beat them so is that the kind of tagline um this is a hazy fresh hopped pale ale um it's only five percent which is effectively table beer as far as alpha Delta are concerned because some of the other ones or all of the other ones in the box that i've got which was six beers deep just was um as melt your face off stuff in terms of abv a couple of heavy stouts in there but this is um, really, really palatable. It's it's an incredible paleo, actually. Um, up there with the, the 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 other great kind of juicy pails, I would say, is a kind of step above exactly what Alpha Delta were needing, for me anyway, based on having visited a tap room and gone there for a couple of beers just before we left, having something in their range that's, that's this kind of level means you can enjoy all the flavour that you, you expect to get for an Alpha Delta beer without it melting your face off. Um, Apparently, this is straight off a plane for Washington State. Um, frozen Simcoe and Mosaic Hops. 
and then dry hop with uh, Sutra Cryo, Idaho 7 and Columbus. Um, it's incredibly sessionable, but it packs a massive kind of flavour at um, perfect just at the fridge and a great first beer. Sounds good, mate. Sounds very, very nice. Um, those, um, those beers that you had, um, the Alpha Delta ones that you had at the weekend table, that smelled like incredible. Aye. Um, I just think it's a brewery that I've, like I've tried definitely, but I really don't think that we've <clears throat> got to the bottom of no. how good they are yet. Um, and obviously, I slightly remember the triple from the Edinburgh Craft Beer Festival because it was Aye. like 10% meth and it was absolutely like <laughs> delish. But uh, honestly, no, nah, they, they're are a brewery that are definitely on. They are on the list. They're on the list. And, they, and, and on that list note, um, exciting exactly. news, um, in a couple of weeks' time, they will be joining us on the podcast so we can get a clarification of that name. Um, I appreciate Aaron getting in touch um, with us. Looking and, forward um, to that one. That's going to be style. a good one. Like I said, if you listen to the, the podcast I recorded, um, the kind of meh period between... Christmas and New Year, you'll know that they're on my list of breweries who I wanted to get on the podcast this year. So there's one ticked off the list, which is super. So really, Stuff. really looking forward to that. Um, back to yourself, MD. You've managed to taste your beverage now uh, on the 1st of uh, Feb and your first beer of the month, of the year. What do you it's think? Lovely. Just easy, clean. Um, so it's a 4% lager, so let's be honest, I wasn't, I'm not expecting nothing too crazy but um it's exactly kind of what i was looking for from my first beer it's got all the carbonation to it. it has a slight sort of lemony aspect to it whether that's intentional or not i don't know i was having a wee bit of look on line to see but nothing kind of jumps out um so it has that sort of um we don't do cocktails sort of lager and lime feel to it um <laughs> which the cocktails I've got to admit, it's just it's it's just really nice. Um, it's clean, it's crisp, and it's the like you say, it's the first beer I've ever had from Crafty Devil Brewing. Uh, um, so looking forward to trying the rest of the bottom of the box to be fair. All, to, all tonight, I hope. <laughs> yes, every single one and one session sounds like a yeah. fantastic plan. Fantastic plan. Um, like we said, start of February, and it seems like a good time to look back what we experienced, what we done over January. Um, some brilliant guests who joined us. We had obviously had Mirkai S43, Sheep and Wolves Clothing, and the Wilderness. Um, highlights for yourselves. Um, no point asking you, Mark, because you didn't drink a single fucking thing. No. Doing, yeah. doing things incorrectly. <laughs> As always. <laughs> <laughs> Callum, any highlights for yourself? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I was quite clear in my um, this descriptions of the beer last week from uh, Wilderness and the 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 um the sour deal with plum. Um, I forget the name. Come on, Gaff. Gaff, what was it called? I've got you covered. Naive melody. Thanks. Naive melody. That's right. Um, um, and yep, I, I firmly stand by that as being one of the best beers I've ever tasted. Um, so it's it's going to take it's going to take one hell of a beer for me this year, um, to knock that off its perch. Um, so yeah, it's that, that that's that's definitely been my highlight. But but I think um, in terms of it was, a, it was a great conversation, but I think it was probably one for the purists in terms of like the bar mm-hmm. legend and Aye. and all that kind of stuff. Um, from a sort of whole round perspective, I, I, I had such a great night chatting um, with uh, Sheep and Wheels Clothing. Um, mm-hmm. it, was, it was such a great night. Um, the beer was great. Um, the chat was great. The ethos behind the brewery is great. Um, I just loved. Um, his whole mindset and and the, where he was coming from, um, in terms of designing his brand and and yeah. inclusivity and things like that, yeah. So it's it's, it's been a great start to you. All right, it was they were properly proper like one of those um, breweries that when they say uh, they want the beer to be approachable, that they, they had a beer for everybody, which was which was actually nice to see. Um, and that was really exciting to actually have Matty on from uh, Sheep and Wolves Clothing. Um, it was nice to have some returning guests as well. Um, Mary Kai and S43, so Alex from S43 and Emma and Ollie, um, showing and showcasing their all roads lead to nowhere or everywhere, or should really 
remember. Always lead to nowhere. No, oh, yeah. I was right. I was right the first time. Um, you were. And their collaboration, New England, which was super. I know. I don't know why. I, I don't know why I questioned myself there. <laughs> don't know. I don't ever know why I do that. Anyway, um, I know. But that was a really good collaboration. Two fantastic breweries, and it was nice to see. Um, obviously, Mirakai kind of. I don't want to say stepping up, but obviously getting more exposure. Um, obviously further north, and it's good to see them kind of growing as a brewery. And obviously, I've been there a couple of times, and. Um, they've moved premises and in a new a new place, and they've got the brewery all set up. So it's good to see those guys um, getting more exposure. And obviously, Ollie's just a bit of a wizard at making beer. He's got that barrel age, which I was lucky enough to witness him just tap. I was literally two minutes too late to actually sample a bit, but it was nice to see him kind of getting that tapped up and see. It'll be good to see the end result. So it's good to see those guys growing. Um, for yourself, Gil, any standouts for yourself? I thought the media guy in this forty three chat was really good. It was good to get a bit of an insight into how collaborations work and how they come about, what the the kind of byproducts of that's going to be, and how that helps and plans for them moving forward. It's good to see the kind of breweries on the on the rise. S forty three obviously a wee bit, I would say maybe a wee bit more advanced, although um, they might not say so themselves. Yeah. Um, but kind of taking those that are. Looking to innovate the way they do um, forward with them uh, in Mirakai. And it was good to, to finally talk to um, Wally from Mirakai because I missed him the last time. So nah, you got in trouble for that, didn't highlight. you? Highlight, yeah. Still got the glass though, so <laughs> I never lost. I never oh, exactly. lost to that one. The glassware was, was the, the buzz. One of the one of the standout beers um, over the last few weeks for the guests um, for me was um, going back. To wilderness was them um, the the beer ordinaire which we kind of spoke about last week and that that it was three point nine percent and the maltiness and the bitterness and just the the that low of an ABB but to have such a complex kind of beer was amazing and just the bitterness was tremendous and that whole conversation was like you said Cal definitely for the purists and people that are, are really um, buzz deep so to speak in the craft beer and quite nerdy <laughs> in it and um, it was it was great to talk to James and get a proper insight and just, just like I don't want to say how mental you need to be, but you do have to be to some degree to decide you're going to age a beer for eighteen months. And yeah, just you've got to have it. a totally different a totally different way of looking at beer. Aye, do you know what I mean? It's, and and to, to to be brave enough to to go for Brave's that. the right word. Brave's the with right no word. Ex- with no experience. Um, and to. You know, to to go whole wholeheartedly into it, you know, I think it's just phenomenal, and he's, and, and they'd be so modest as well. You know, <laughs> I no. go quite, but I go quite, I go quite uncomfortable at points as well. You know, when we were talking, we were totally banging on about his beer, and he was like, you could see him cringing and stuff, which was a bit of a shame, but it was funny at the same time. It was, it was good. That Even was the social good. media stuff afterwards, you know, his uh, colleague Emma and that had messaged and stuff and said, oh, it's really good to work with him and all that stuff, and he was just like. If you say anything nice, you might get fired in the morning. Because that was the beer I just about picked out the fridge when I was mm. going to pick my first like beer. I'd done a quick video that I was going to post um, on like whatever, and uh, to be like, here's the here was the choices, and then this is what I've ended up with. Because um, as you can imagine, the beer fridge is pretty stocked and. That was sitting at the bottom in the kind of midst of it. And I was like, you boys raved about that beer last week. And I was like, oh, and I was humming and hawing. I was like, do I really want to start with a like a 3.9%? Like, like uh, it's a perfect a ABV complex. for starting. Aye, aye, aye. Better. And I was like, I might hold off until the taste buds get fired up a little bit so I can really appreciate it. I think you need to get the engine running for a wee bit. For a wee while before you get stuck into that, um, to properly enjoy and um, savour it. Um, obviously, like you, like we said, you throughout January we're, we're being sensible and doing dry January and, and looking after your health and all that jazz. Um, any this, st- heavy, this year it wasn't about the health thing. This year it was just solely for. It wasn't for. It wasn't for saving money anyway. No, it wasn't it? Like there was Fucking up on beer it was, that's what it was. Nice. No money, yeah. <laughs> nah, it was just the sheer 
like the challenge of it, just switch the mind off and like folk are always laugh at me when I say that I'm doing dry January and they're like, but you do a beer podcast. And I said, I know that's part of the fun and frustrating part where you're mm-hmm. going to watch your best mates drink beer every week and you've got to kind of sit on your hands and try and come up with constructive ways of asking questions about what does a beer taste like right. when you're not actually tasting it. But um, Especially like, when we're bombarding, go just take a drink. Because like uh, we are very supportive friends. It's like the old <laughs> tube I mean, I must say, in your, in your credit, and your cre- to your credit, sorry, that I don't think I noticed the uh, the quality of your questioning dissipate no. at all. I don't know what that says about <laughs> your, your quest level of questioning when you are drinking beer or not. Right. Um, but <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, you did now. Nah, you did a, a smashing job. I would just have. I would have had to not turn up and sit in the dark for two hours every Tuesday. Sit in the dark. <laughs> it's really interesting <laughs> because it does change to the radio. It is really difficult when you know you, especially when from because I've got a wee bit of background in terms of like the hops and brewing aspect of it. So mm-hmm. when you mention like certain hops, when we've had like and you know it was Galaxy for example when we we're speaking to s three and stuff and the first thing that comes to my head with galaxy is that dank grassy flavor yeah but when you don't get to try the beer it's like how do you ask that question and, and, and is it supposed to taste like that and they're like uh, well you know and they're like fuck okay well and you're like just they're like just drink it and just drink it and you'll find out so but to be honest with you i, I tried quite a wee bit of non-alcohol stuff um but I wasn't like as kind of driven like I was last year to try and find as yeah. many different breweries and that. I just, whenever something came up, um, we tried. Like Miguel was very kind and got a couple of cans um, from High Spirits at the weekend um, that I got into um, a tool beer that was lovely. The, I had a Mikula, um like pale, which was really f- flavour strong as well. Um, we had an absolute horrific wheat beer, um, <laughs> yeah, which, <laughs> which I, was... I don't think I'll be upsetting anybody by reading out the name of this beer. So I'm, I'm drew another one anyway. So I'll go and find it. Go and find it. Go and find it. But I think the good thing, the good thing is for like for us, like when we're doing the podcast, is we had obviously like we mentioned sheep and we were closing in, and it allowed like you to like we said they're very accessible like you were mm-hmm. having a, a, a known low alcohol beer and one of us is having a 2.3 and then we were having the barrel age which i think was five point something mm-hmm. so we said all ranges of, of abvs which is really which is good um and i don't think any of the beers were suffered from that low abv as we mentioned and it was it was good to have that no that uh, uh, half of ice and from uh, sheep and wool clothing was lovely um, yes and, very That's balanced. why Hefeweizen is supposed to be, you know, Correct. this... Uh, <laughs> what was yours? Like, hop a, <laughs> hop a drop a hoff in the room. Uh, Kaiser Dom. Oh. Hefeweizen. Oh, dear. No. 0.0%. Right, uh, they should have just flung the 0.5 in to try and make it taste the song. Right. Still, the... Got, still got the water, uh, water, wheat, malt, barley, malt, yeast, hops. Was honestly. that from High Spirits or did you get that somewhere else? No, I got so the two alcohol free beers I didn't actually get from High Spirits. They had a pastry sour, from, right. an alcohol free pastry sour from Amundsen. Um, but I did go to the beer cave ah. and picked up a couple of alcohol free beers. So this beer, the tool beer, which was the the pick of the bunch alongside the Mickler number that you had, Mark, was um, Implosion, it's called. Ah, yes. So it's a delicious non-alcoholic beer with all its complexity and crispness and flavour while keeping a, a level head. Um, I had that last year. Lovely. It's zero point three percent that one. Um, oh, zero point three. Oh no. Um, but I lovely we said three thirty mil can. Like you said as well, Mark. I think when you were there on Saturday, there's only so many alcohol-free beers you can drink. Right. So like this thing in a big four forty mil can. Is going to take you all night to drink it. It's going to be warm by the time you get to the bottom. It's going to be pretty mm-hmm. awful. Wasn't Whereas the wee three thirty was probably just enough to kind of give a taste bud something, but to think about. But no, obviously have the alcohol content in it, and it was diff- right. diff- I tasted it, and it was different enough to kind of just. Oh, I totally. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> see- like you know what I mean? Like I, I kind of. No, I don't even. You wouldn't have wanted to have a. But that that's the measure. Like, you wouldn't think you were wasting it. Whereas with other ones, like you've tried to kind of. The punky F and things like that. Aye. And 
even for me to a certain extent, things like Bex Blue and stuff, although it does have a wee bit of flavour, it was nowhere near having a, a, something that tasted crafty, if you like, whereas Aye. the tool stuff I thought had a bit of oomph behind it and at least had a bit of hot flavour. Definitely. That's, sometimes that's the measure of when you're having a no and low alcohol beer is, would, is it better than a can of juice? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> would that, would that be better off? Can it beat a soda water and lime? <laughs> exactly. No, no, the one that, the one that I, I, and I had mentioned this on Saturday, the one that kind of stands out to me is the Lucky Saint. <clears throat> like, for a, like, I know it's a lager and it's a generic lager, but it's a Bavarian sort of kind of styled, mm-hmm. like European styled lager. And for me, it's got like a bit of white, it tastes like, it tastes like a normal pissy lager. Mm-hmm. Like, and is that not very? Is that not really popular in America? Have I made that up? Uh, I don't I probably know. made that up. Carry on. Sorry. But for me, like, it at least resembles. Like, so if you like, you know, if we went into the pub and you had a pint of fucking Heverly or you had a pint of Tenants or you had a pint of fucking San Miguel or whatever generic lager, right? It was on tap, right? You've got that. Let's be honest. That either you have kind of crisp sort of flavour, or you have a metallic piss water lager flavour. And for me, the the Lucky Saint has that kind of crisp kind of sweetness that mm-hmm. you expect from a good like Hells or a good Pilsner or whatever it is. So it kind of just at least makes you feel like you've had something that resembles a beer. And I think that's like we've mentioned that way. All the kind of styles, like, is if it's better than <clears> I'm going to have another can of coke, then I think you're on to a win. So, like I said, that's the measure. That is definitely the measure. If you'd rather have a can of coke than whatever non-alcoholic beer you're having, then it's shit. Um, like I said, we're doing a kind of review. Oh, go, Cal. go for it, Cal. I'm just. Uh, I've moved. I've moved on. Pretty much immediately after I started uh, finished describing the <laughs> kernel table beer, because uh, I'd been nursing it for so long, um, and I've opened up another kernel, and it's uh, Dunkel or Dunkel, mm-hmm. Dunkel. right? Dunkel. And it's a uh, four and a half, four point four percent, and it's a Munich style dark lager. Dark lager, right? And it's Beautiful absolutely stunning. It's it's absolutely. I, I can't even say that I've um, the closest that I've had has been. Um, I had a, a doppelbock a couple of weeks ago, a seven percent mm-hmm. doppelbock, which was, which was kind of similar in color and and style, um, but it's beautifully complex. It really is. It's it's got a lovely roasty flavor, um, mm-hmm. but like it, it doesn't it, it doesn't detract from the sort of lageriness. It's it's I would say it's like a creamy lager. Does that make sense? No, I know what you mean. I mean, have you had have you have you actually had a bad beer from that box? Not yet. No, no, no. And I've, I've just been going through. Um, given that we're talking about January. Um, I've been going through my pictures there while we were blathering um, and just talking about the beers that we're looking at, the, the sort of standout beers that I've had. Um, and I, there was a couple of kernel ones in there. I think I've had four or five out of the box now, um, and they've all been s- superb. Well, so that, that was going to be my, my next kind of question. Is, uh, is there a beer, or is there a, a January beer of the month individually? I mean, that you want to share, shout out... Gilroy, any, any. It's actually been. Or Cal. I'll give you some. I'll give you some highlights. So my my, my best beer was the was the one for Wilderness last last week. But yes. um, I had a Dea Beak a collab Cosmic Control Double IPA. Yes. Um, earlier in the month, which blew my socks off. It was tremendous. Yes. Um, and sticking sticking with Dea, I had um a, their collab with Don Zoko, which was the Margarine um, mm-hmm. Lager. 5.3 um, and that was sublime as well it really was absolutely brilliant um, and I yeah so th- those are those are sort of my, my highlights so far Gil any for yourself mate um, I had a, just on Saturday there I had a lovely um, <coughs> cloud water uh, double IPA so it was Motueka Citra and New Zealand Cascade figured we was coming into now February we're into New Zealand beer month yeah. Um, for which we we need to, I think, partake as much as it will be twisting my arm <laughs> for me uh, partaking some of what Pierce has got on offer for New Zealand Beer Month. But uh, this was Cloud Waters one. Um, it was six percent just, but a, a lovely double IPA. 
um, soft and juicy. Be light for a double. It was I, but it was it was incredibly tasty. Um, no, <sighs> tell I that's rubbish. It was it was good to go. Hey. I tell you, the crap. reflection of the reflection of the shitey fancy lights I've got to take my pictures caused me an issue there. Would you believe? Mm. Um, mm. So eight percent. It was perfect, like orange juice in the glass. Um, just really, really juicy, really tasty. Hops came to the to the front. Um, high spirits kind of pulling it out the bag again with their um, massive fridge selection, uh, which is is perfect. I've been in there twice in seven days, mm-hmm. uh, which is. And I was I was mega impressed, so heads gone back. So um really enjoyed their stuff. The I've just opened actually, since we're talking about beers I got in January. Mark very kindly when he decided to buy everybody's beer but no drink any, um, picked me up uh, some track beers or some more track beers. Oh. And this is just a, a small one by again by their reckoning. Um but this is the, it was their West Coast series. So this is the latest one out of the three. Um, it's called Come On In, and it's their West Coast Pale. So it's Citra and Citra Cryo, um, 5%, but it's absolutely lovely. I mean, that is kind of my bag in terms of stylings, is, is that kind of pale ale that's super flavoursome. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really kind of getting into that, I think. And uh, it means you can drink a few, but you can still you're still getting a bit of flavour and a bit of taste without going too mental. Um, and it's just incredible. Uh, Tracker are, are obviously up there with the best and brightest, and there's a reason for that. Um, and I'm interested to taste the heavier hitting West Coast ones as well. Cannot wait to get into that that wee th- trio or whatever it was that came. Like, Definitely. best is best, mate. Simple as that. It's not super bitter, but, but it's a pale ale, so it's not supposed to be. It's just supposed Aye. to be that side of, of the, the flavour spectrum when it is. Um, it's decidedly that way com- in comparison with the kind of super juicy number for um, Alpha Delta. So it was good to have one side and then the other to help me distinguish. Really good. Defo. Um, two beers for myself out with um, the guests that we've already mentioned. Um, well, what I mentioned I had uh, Overtones Azaka Reboots 8% number, which was obviously full of Azaka, fair enough. Um, absolutely stunning. Colour was fabulous. Taste wise, phenomenal. Um, which you expect from me, say. And the other one was a Vault City number, which has been sitting in my dad's fridge for a while. I think probably been sitting there for about a year, incidentally. Um, it's a double dry hopped hard lemonade, the Citra and Azaka 9.5%. Off what a beer. Um, this is over. This is Vault City in a bottle, proper bottle, incidentally. Um, lemony tart sour nice and thick what you expect from a a, a big bad boy vault city um i'm just glad my, my dad had it hidden in the back of his beer fridge and decided to bring it down so i was uh, very pleased with that it's potentially potentially one of the best vault city beers i've had i know uh, we've said about the the guava one um, and kiwi blah 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 i'm not going to pronounce every single fruit that's inside it um but now nah, absolutely stunning loved it and that that kind of double dry hopped element as well just added something really nice but that was a cracking beer so there's are two of my favorite ones i've had this month so i was gonna say so far but it wouldn't be so far because we're in a new month that'd be stupid uh mark any i know you, you didn't have many but any standouts i think the hefeweizen from sheep and rolls is probably the easy one um that stands out and to be honest with you I would go the other way for me and just say I had a really, really bad non-alcohol, like or an alcohol-free beer, right? And it's a bit of a travesty because <clears throat> it was whatever day, whatever podcast we, we, we had it on. Um, and I had the first mouthful of it when we were talking to the guest and I thought, this is quite, it's quite palatable, malty. It's got to be a bit of flavour to it and honestly it warmed up and the next mouthful and the continuous mouthfuls was honestly like cold tea and it was you didn't want the cold tea no and or so it was the harvest and swished um oh, right. and it was and if i could have get, honestly given it a minus rating <laughs> i would have given it a minus rating um, i was re- i was racing to get back 
to unmute myself there. I was away getting another beer and I was racing to get myself back for that. Because see, when you when you when you mentioned it on the podcast, you you, you said that <clears throat> harvesting would would would, would be a, a brewery that's kind of up my street, which I suppose is a, is a fair point. Well, but we are better in twisted, it, so that makes sense. <laughs> yes. But it kind of that when I seen the wheat, it kind of twigged in my memory, and it wasn't until a few days later that I remembered that I have actually had that beer, and it was fucking horrific. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I knew, I knew, I was standing out at the fridge there trying to wait, getting a beer out, and I, I was like, oh, "No, I need to run back." But no, you, you said it first. But I, oh, I knew so you were going to say that. It was honestly like I hate. I, I really do hate crapping on beers and breweries but if to, let's be honest if we're i'm not doing my job on the, this podcast if i'm not being honest and for me it honestly was cold tea it was poor 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 and i appreciate the kind of style of beer it was trying to make it itself a, it was supposed to be like a you know like a, an ale right. um and it was just but there we go. I thought you of all went positive, so I'll at least bring the tone down a little bit by slating a poor no. beer. So. Absolutely. Here, real opinions. Real opinions on the Beer Fridge podcast, as you would expect. We like to be hard hitting. Hard hitting. Um, getting stuck into the zero percent beer. Getting stuck in, I know. Um, new segment to the podcast, um, which we will continue to do for the foreseeable future because I think it's good. And I think it'd be quite funny. Um, is uh, Clum's short term views, and basically, Mister Muir is going to give us uh, a beer review in three words. Um, he's got three words only, no more than three, um, to do a beer review. Um, your beer selection for this evening is. It's um. Yeah, thank you hot. very much. I <laughs> know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Too many. I know. So well. <laughs> I'll tell you the beer. I'll tell you the beer, how much it cost, and where I got it from, and then I'll give you my review. Roger. And three words. If right? you can give it to you a star sign as well, that'd be good. Um, so I'm going to butcher the pronunciation. I'll Mark, um, and it's called Hoffelgen. 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 I don't know why you're looking at us for for like Hoffelgen. backup here. Right. Right. Um, name. And the reason I picked it up. The reason I picked it up was I was getting my messages in Aldi and we, we'd done a podcast a few weeks back, um, a couple of months back, um, about the the Aldi sort of copies of beers. Um, and it, and the bottle is remarkably similar to um, Hogarden, um, which isn't craft, I know, but it's uh, it's it's one of the, one of the old favourites, really, for me, certainly, uh, the Belgian whip beer. Um, and I gave Skinner kind of the sort of grimace, but it's, it's one that I really like. Um, and I thought, oh, I wonder how I wonder if how, how they've managed to to go um, replicating that style. So that's the beer that I got. It was a seven fifty ml bottle, five percent. I think it was about two quid, two seventy five or something oh. like that for a seventy for a seven hundred and fifty ml bottle. Um, with a cork, incidentally, uh, so you can't even put the put screw the top back on and uh, have some more later. You need to drink it on one go. Or um, drink a sink. Mm, drink a sink, guy. So the 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 clums short term view is weak, watery, and witless. <laughs> weak, watery, and witless. Lovely. Don't want any more. That's all I want. That's it. I'm off. Moving off. On. Moving on. Done. So. There you go. What's that? And if you like that segment, give us a thumbs up. I don't know and how you'd do that, mind you. And that's it. Both. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm going to, um, since we're just talking about beers, I suppose, I'm, I've moved on as well. So um, I've opened um, a Stuart Brewing and Barthas uh, Project 7's El Nino Double West Coast IPA. Um, seven point eight percent. What's it called? El Nino. El Nino. El Nino. But but hold on. What did you say? I think I said El Nino. <laughs> I'm sure he's a striker for some Premier League player. But <laughs> is he not just been transferred to Aberdeen? One hundred percent. He's actually he's been transferred to Hibs because it's uh, Stuart. So put it that way. But 
Um, so West Coast, you know, West is best for me. Um, so this is um, Chinook, Cascade and Centennial. 100% the three hops that you want when it comes to a West Coast beer. Um, grapefruit, pine um, is the kind of the way forward. I've got to admit, it isn't as bitter as I would want as a proper West Coast. However, it is super, super, super sessionable for a West Coast. And I'm totally coining this phrase, phrase it's a West Coast for everybody. Like, it's a West Coast for the people, man. It is a people's West Coast, for sure. Um, if you're a West Coast enthusiast like myself, you're going to say it's probably not got the bitterness that you want. However, all the other flavours are there. It's got that grapefruitiness. It has this really lovely kind of piney resinous uh, flavour. It does linger on the tongue um, as well. It has a nice mouthfeel to it. Uh, it is nice and dark. It's got a good colour to it. You can see some through it so it's kind of got that clear aspect that you would come to expect. Wait, hold on rewind stop stop that's a good glass for it it is one it's a good glass right that's the positive thing i'm going to say yes it's dark you can see through it that's true it is it's not like a light beer it's not what you would it's not what it's you like would an amber colored west clear. coast comparison with that. Mate, Roger, Roger, Roger. I'm just clarifying for the audio that listening. Is, that, is the, that is the definition, Callum. Remember back to your chemistry days? Oh, that is the definition sorry, of Callum clear, just had right? a beer gasm. It, it can be clear. I'm, uh, trademark, it I'm, tra- be. I'm trademarking that, by the way. Beer gasm. Yes. A beer gasm. Somebody said that before you. Nah, not. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Del. We're going to admit, we're, uh, we're just making up like phrases. We're just coining like beer fridge phrases, right? Man. Which is awesome. Well, we innovate. <laughs> we innovate and we... push, push. You know what I mean? Uh, what is that beer, Cal? Okay, you start talking. Because Mark, Mark's... Uh, have you finished talking about oh, your... Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm Mark. quite happy to move. Uh, considering <clears> you he's made the... On, he's El Nino. He's having a Nino. the rest of us. Nino's, Nino, Nino's pulled his hamstring. He's been subbed. He's <laughs> been transferred. He's been transferred to whatever uh, fruity number you've got going on there. Yeah, so I've just opened one of the beers that I got delivered um, from the beer merchants um, with my Christmas pennies. And um, I'm going to be another butchering of uh, pronunciation. Oh, it's the that, Swedish brewery Stigbergets. Ah, Stigbergers. Oh. Right. Um, and it's, it's called it's called Terra Nova, um, and it's their triple IPA, ten point nine percent, and a uh, holy fucking bejesus! And look <laughs> at the colour of that. My God, it's like peach juice or something. That's lovely hazy and see through. That is not clear, <laughs> Gavin. That is the you could stand a spoon. Up. I was going to say there's a spoon standing in that. Uh, you could stand a spoon up in this fucking thing. Um, the opposite. Uh, it is it's like chewy honestly you need a knife and fork with this beer <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so good man it's like it, it's go it's really bitter orange um but at the same time you're getting loads of tropical punchy flavors there um it's oh it's absolutely stunning really really nice really really nice <clears throat> um really nice. look forward to um the, really nice. <laughs> the rest of february um like i said we've <laughs> got some breweries lined up um to join us on the podcast um like i said we've got alpha Delta joining us in the middle of the month which we're looking forward to um again like i said they're, they're a brewery for me that are on the list of of ones that i wanted to talk to this year and um, the beers have always had good hype around them we've just we've just never um sampled them enough um and I'm really, really looking forward to that. And another one we've got lined up for you guys in February is Bionetta Brewing, uh, a small batch uh, brewery in North Yorkshire, which, um, again, really excited to see what they have got. Also, small dog about to get strangled, if it doesn't shut the fuck up. Um... <laughs> I'm looking forward to that one, because um, as he's started kind of brewing in his garage as well, so it's going to be the old kind of traditional... How did a brewery start? Oh, I started making stuff in my garage and all the rest of it. Um, and he's so new on the scene. 
I don't know even if he's on the scene yet. I think it's the easiest way to put it. However, it was re- these beers were recommended from our friends at Bruiser as well yes. when they've tried, which, you know, th- those guys are obviously getting a chance to sample loads of stuff. And for them to... You know what? We should just start in Beer Fridge podcast subscription just to get sampling beer for the hell of it. To be fair, I think we do all right considering... <laughs> We basically yeah. do that we already. Just <laughs> we, just, we successfully have recommended everybody that Bruiser's picked. <laughs> That's a fair point. That is a fair point. It says a lot about the service. I think we've had a, a, a... I know we've picked the right breweries, but, but I think... Um, I don't think there's a, there's going to be a bad box in there. I think you could, you could, let, you could go potluck and they would uh, turn you up with something good. I think I've got a lucky dip procured. on for next month. To see what oh, yeah. they come up with. Oh, I'm There's so some... I'm honestly so tempted to do a lucky dip, but I go through the list and I'm like, yes, yes. But that's yes. the problem for me though. When you go through that list, is the fact that you're like, oh, okay, I could have that one. Okay, I could have Alpha. Oh yeah, I could have Overtone. I could have Track. I could have Beak. I could have right in the end, like uh, I don't know where I'm going to pick. I'm just going to let them pick. I know. I think I've 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 swapped so many times, but now looking forward to uh, being at a Bruin. Good name as well. Um, like that a lot. Um, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. And today, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> um, talking about Bruiser. Um, what's your selections for next month? I know I was on the website last night looking through it and making my picks, and I think I changed mine about four or five times before I stuck with what I've went with. And as I'm speaking, I'm going on to my. Um, subscription right now to tell you that I picked S43. Ooh. I've, I've decided to pick, stay with that and hoping that I might get a big, I might get a Battenberg. It's my thinking, Batman. It's my thinking. Yes. Might get a cheeky wee Battenberg number. Um, what you went with this month, Delco? I think mine is Shindiger. See, so the only reason I'm staying clear of those Ooh, okay. is because Good. I've I've tried some of their beer. That I'm pretty sure, um, south of the border. I'm not sure about in Scotland. They were available in Asda, and I had one. I'm fucking howling. Really? I did not enjoy it. Um, so kind of staying clear of them. However, if you do go with it, it'd be nice to kind of get your review on it and whether that's just a consequence of of being in the supermarket and going at the margins, which we've talked about numerous times. Um. And whether their stuff outside the supermarket is a lot better than inside the supermarket. Um, I'm not a massive fan uh, of of the beer that I can't remember. It was like a mango beer, if I oh, remember correctly. I did, that's, I just, that's the problem. It just wasn't, wasn't, the, it wasn't the nicest. And here, if they come in the podcast, I'll happily say that to them. Um, but I hope they prove me wrong. So it'll be interesting to see if you do I'm stick with that, stick. mate. I think, because I did have a quick look and I was going to go, like I said, um, random or shuffle or whatever mm. it's called. Um, but I've kind of went, the last two months I've thought, I'm going to go with breweries I've just never, either one I've never heard of yeah, or two I've like heard of for whatever reason but I've never tried. Never so tried them, I. Crafty Devils was the last month's box, which I get I'd never ever heard of. Shindigger I have heard of, mm-hmm. um, but haven't tried until um, at all, to be honest. Um, I so, mean, rock the the rock leopard for me is one that I've, I've I've nearly picked. I've I've went on it and I've nearly picked it. It's just it said it may contain duplicates, and it's that's not an issue. But if I can get the same number of beers, so in this case I can get eight, um, and they're going to be all different, and I get, at least get a, a, a really good range. But with the rock, you don't leopard, know that though. Chris, no, you honest. don't. You don't know that. You don't know. You're thinking. You're thinking. I've, I've always had doubles. I'm thinking. Every I batch. think only one box for me has had a double. Um, but I mean, the thing for me is you get a rock leopard glass, which looks at the bollocks. No, cool. Looks cool. AF, and their beers have been. I mean, as I think the first introduction for us for Rock Leopard was that Cloudwater box, which was in I mean, Tesco. If, if that's the standard, then that was an awesome beer. 
was an awesome beer. Really, really good beer. And um, Cal, for yourself, your selection for February's Bruiser. I'm currently debating, to be honest. I mean, I've just logged in and um, selecting. Yeah, I, I I went in and it was overtone, and I'm I'm a bit. I'm a bit going along the same lines of thinking as Mark. You know, I've had overtone, I've had quite a, a lot. I, I obviously, I'm not as much an apologist as you, yep. Gav. Um, but I've had my fair share. Um, and yeah, they're all great. But I think the whole point of this, if you're going to be spending 38 quid a month, I think the whole point is to try and broaden your horizons. Definitely. Um, so I'm, I'm currently in the process. Um, there was one. I, the, say, Arbor, the Arbor box is very appealing to me at the moment. See, I've had, I've had quite a lot of Arbor giant as well. Giant fucking cans. Giant fucking I cans, know. and there's eight of them. Mm, but eight giant cans. I mean, there's only like sea bomb. There's only so many sea bombs you can have. The other one for me that I nearly went for was there were two. Excuse me, was Attic and Beer Inc. Attic. Um, where the I other are, uh, two are on there somewhere for me. Attic. Firebrand was one that I had looked at. They're a brewery in uh, North Cornwall. Um, oh. I, which I quite like. The, quite like the look of, and they're they're at twelve. Well, can case as well, ten four forties and two three thirties, and their and their case, which I think would be quite good. But I, 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 I was suspecting maybe doublers in there also. Aye, I mean, if you're listening to this and you're going, "What the f are these four absolute nut jobs talking about?" And um, there's a new um, beer subscription called Bruiser. You can sign up yourself. You can go to Bruiser dot beer um, and get yourself signed up to that. Um, we don't get paid by these guys. We just think it's potentially if not the best beer subscription service out there at the moment and we highly recommend it um and we don't get any discount we don't get paid for these get from these guys we just bloody like what they're doing and which is an service, absolute travesty incidentally <laughs> and the service that they're providing it, the, the the delivery could be better in some cases um well i got tracking on this month I got tracking, tracking on the, in January. Yeah, that was my first. That was my third bruiser box, and it was the first time I actually got tracking there on the go. uh, thing. So I knew it was coming, Beautiful. which was a bonus. Um, but that's been my only. That's been my only issue as as so far. Um, you know, apart from the, uh, January's box for for November and December, I, I didn't get any updates into when it was coming or anything like right. that. So, ah, that's I am, uh, So I was just going to say, I am on a. Lane box. Lane. Nearly picked that. Nearly picked that as well. What um what did you get three no six four forties and then a couple of three thirties? I think so. Uh, I'm pretty sure you get a mix of four four forties and three thirties on that one. Um Lane based in Brighton. Um Yeah, we tried them at the Edinburgh Craft Beer Festival, which is why I wanted to try a, a, an exclusive box mm-hmm. um, from them. I went, yeah, their showcase box, which is four three thirties and six four forties. So ten years, you can't say better than that. It's... No, you can't at all. I was um, just on a total random earlier again, and X. All the beers gets... are kosher, by the way, Lane. Oh, there you go. Bing bong. I thought it looked at uh, three hills. Mm. Right, because the beers we had when um, I had them on were amazing, Unreal. and they've got two three thirties, one obviously three seven five bottle, three four forties, and then a one seven fifty. Ah, uh, you proper get a properly get a proper That's mix. Be, and you know the beers were they were mad. Like, did you, know, you the, see? Uh, did you see the ones they did? I think it was before Christmas, and they did the four forty mil cans and did the wax around them. Aye. Um. They look, but they did the wax in the on the bottom. On the bottom, right. Um, so the can looks upside down when you see it because it's got the wax. But they looked, they look. I might change. You've kind of you've you've put a doubt in my head with Shindigo. I'm just I'm just saying my opinion is I had a beer from Asda from Shindigo. It was like mango something, and it just was shit. <laughs> um, and like okay. I said, it might just be because it was it was in Asda and all the margins and all that crap that we've we've spoken about before. But it's just it's just mm. put me off. I, um, There's part of me because... wants to stay true and stick because you've said that too. And let's give them an honest try 
as in like we're putting the ball in their court. It's not in supermarket beer. It's show us what you can do. Or the other thing you can do is just double up and get two boxes. To be honest with you, the, the amount of beer I've got, I don't need two boxes showing up, mate. I think I've got about eight to cans or something or bottles at the moment, which is ridiculous. So P A R T Y. Indeed. Sounds like the plan. Um, can I vary, because I know you're going to wind up ever so soon. Um, I want to return, because it, it was one of the penny drop moments, because I'm a total numpty None. Um, on the first beer that I had this evening, so that if you can't beat them, the Alpha Delta Hoppy Juicy Pale Ale, and I've managed to work out what it is. Right. Um, the, this week in Craft Up Beer, and, and those other guys that have commented when Alpha Delta released the beer were mentioned a few comments about um, it looks great no matter how you look at it mm-hmm. um, so if you take that uh, the name that I butchered yes before and read it backwards um, it's Asvex who are a brewing company who have a box available on brewery, brewery in Liverpool yes. um, who's if you look at their logo looks suspiciously like the Alpha Delta logo Yes. Turned upside down. It does. Um, and the Alpha Delta logo in this can is turned upside down. Oh. And then they've also got Asvex written backwards on the can. Um, That's so it's cheeky. very much a Colin the Caterpillar style, obviously done with their consent and their approval, I'd imagine. Um, but it's... Uh, aye, Incidentally, it's that, ad, that, that, that brewery Asvex is another one that was on my list of ones that I talked to. They're on my March. They're my March box. I, I, I hope you get the, the big seagull one. There's a big, there's a can that's got a, just a massive seagull on it. Um, that that's what always caught my eye when I was going through the like Instagram, that like, all that jazz. Um, I think I've had a, a brewery for Liverpool before. Mm, I think I've tasted no. beer for a brewery. Or well, the, I suppose, uh, Glen Affric are the world, aren't they? Aye, ten, aye, that's true. Um, so they're that side, but it's never, it's not actually Liverpool. So um, yeah, looking forward to trying that. But I, I managed to work out what the name thing was. Sorry, I wanted to go back to it to make sure I didn't have folks saying you're an absolute zoomer, Scott. How did you uh, notice that? So, oh, no, that, that makes sense. I figured out eventually, I, you probably heard the penny drop a, a couple of minutes ago, just as I figured out it was. Ba-doing. Ba-doing. So, I, that's what it is. I'm a hundred percent switching. As Vex. I've went, I've went wild card. Ooh. Oh, left field. I just. I didn't do enough research, put it that way. So I've went on the Shindigar's website just now, yeah. Um, and I had a look through the beers that they offer, right? And don't get me wrong, I'm like I've hit. They've got a core range, uh, session, uh, lager, IPA, right? Um, and then they've got their mango unchained. So mango that's unchained. The one, that's the fucking one. That's the one you're talking about, which I think I have. I right. knew it was, I knew it was the same name as another beer. I'm like I couldn't remember it's if it was a, a tune, but it's a fucking. It's definitely been rebranded, so look the cans look better now. To be fair, right? Yeah. But then they have so they've got three core beers, um, which is those ones I just mentioned. So they've got the mango. They've got a peach, everything's peach. They have a lush, which is a guava and a passion fruit pineapple IPA. They've got a watermelon and pineapple lager. No, they've got a watermelon. 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 They've got an East Coast series, which I would be totally into. Um, so they've got three um, East Coasts, um, a 4.4, a 5.2, and a 6.5. So if they three came, I'd be fine. Um, and then they've got their, um, what they call a specials, a passion fruit and pineapple sour. Nope. Nope. Coconut and a chocolate dessert sour. Nope. nope. Iced coffee. Um, which is a black pilsner, a cold brew with uh, Myan, uh, Myanmar coffee. Mm, nope. With a bit of a try that. Um, uh, an IPL, another um, a pina colada. I'm just nope. looking at this and I'm thinking, there's at least eight of these beers that I've just mentioned that if I don't want. they should have. <laughs> like, I'm just no fruity... Pishy, watery, no. Like, give me a stout, give me a Westie, give me a New England, give me a lager, give me a pale. 
Like, you didn't have to throw fucking mango, peach, watermelon, and whatever other... Watermelon? So you've, di- you've ditched Shindigger. 100% what, being you've ditched. Sh- sh- Shindigger have been diggered. What have you picked then? I don't know. I'm just going to go and... Enough, I'm just going to go... I might go with Signature, because that's the first one that I've just seen. <sighs> they're no. Ro- nah, no, they're fine. They're fine. They do good, oh. they do good stuff, to be fair. They do good stuff. The Rodeo... The rodeo... IP, I think it is. Or no, Rody, excuse me, not Rodeo, fuck. Rody makes more more fucking sense. Let's well, just go away. Um, is is decent, is pretty decent. But um yes. Avoid the watermelon. Yeah, no thank you. Wait. I don't One... understand like like watermelon doesn't he fucking taste Taste of anything. anything. Oh, no. It's called wa- it's called watermelon for a reason. Just, uh... Even watermelon flavoured things, then it tastes like watermelon. No. no, it does a good job with a bottle of vodka in fairness. Yeah. If you dump that into it and let it sit for a good bit, well, I just it, it does wonders to a bottle of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> it does wonders. Well, what are you doing? You're watering a watermelon. Yeah, well, like I say, I'm quite glad I brought that up today. And... See, see, I, I will steer you, young Padawan, on the right path. Get, a, get away from the fucking mango unchained and the watermelon. Saying that, can you imagine the reviews I would have been able to do though? Like absolute savage. The reason I remember it as well, like the two reasons I remember the Mango Unchained is one, it's got it had the same name as obviously Brewtoon thing, um, which we raved about, lol, um, and yeah, it was just shit. <sighs> Both beers, um, but anyway, I've got nothing else written on my piece of paper at Papi A. Eh? Um, I think uh, we should season. finish on absolute Slayton breweries. I think that's the total way forward. Well, <laughs> when, when you find out that there's people in breweries that actually listen to this shit, um, why the like, fuck? We're being honest. There's no, like, Slate. That's just, like, it's personal pr- uh, choices when it comes to what you like to drink, what's the, like, Much the flavors that you would go day guy, basically. And, Aye. you know, for, like you say, for me... If you, if you fruit them up too much, it's just like it's no it's no mark up. I turn off for mark. One hundred percent. So I think the more the more that I drink the I, I yeah. want to say prop, proper beers. <laughs> say it. You know the more that I drink the proper beer, mm-hmm. you know like double triples, it, it really opens your eyes to what can be achieved with hops. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because these beers, you would, you, these beers are just out of this world in terms of the flavors that they produce, and and you, you didn't need mango puree or fucking orange peel or nah. or any of that pish in there. You know, get it right with the basic ingredients first, and then once you've got that nailed down, if you want to try and make something with a bit of fruit in it, then go for it. But I think I, I'm 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 drawn towards the same conclusion that you've that you've said for a long time, Mark, is that 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 a lot of times fruit just seems to be added in to cover up a mediocre beer. Yeah. So you know, covering up covering up a lack of skill. Mm-hmm. You know, um, if if you can prove to me that you can do it, you know, just with hops and and brew beers that are stonking good, then I might be more inclined to go and try. A, a, a pineapple IPA or a mango IPA or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, see, see if, like, say, if, like, say, Pentrich or something like that were to come along and, you know, now that I've had their beer, I've had several of their beers and they're all bangers, if they were to come along and do a fruited beer, I might be more inclined to go. I'll get a go. But... All right. That's what you're playing with. Say, devil's advocate, there's what could make a really good living out of Making the fruited stuff and doing it incredibly well. Oh, yes. I must admit, Shindigger's something I've never tried just because I don't know why. It's just always been a. It's just always been a. a there's something always first. more appealing. Like, there's always something next to it that's more appealing. Yeah, for some reason, and I don't know what it is, but I mean, I, mean, I maybe pick a couple up just to try and. I know. Like, we could, we could be, the, um, we could be very, very wrong. Could be a million miles away. Yes. But I would quite like to see. Prove me wrong. Put it that way. Oh, and exactly. I'm, we need I'm to quite... kind of prove ourselves wrong, don't we? We need to go out and get it. Yeah, so it maybe not a bruiser box at 38 quid, but we need no. to. No. 
Right, there we go, Gilroy. You just buy beer. Let's do it. I've not bought any beer in February yet. Oh, so Christ. Oh, yeah, that's him. That's him on the fucking... <laughs> that's him. We, should go to, we should go to High Spirits and see what they've got. I'm sure they've got some shindigger in the fridge. Positive, in fact. Well, give it a go, gents. Prove us right, prove us wrong. Either way, um, there'll be real opinions on the Beer Fridge podcast, as always. Like we said, um, these opinions are of our own, and we could be completely fucking wrong. Um, and we're not, but we could be. Yeah, we could. Nah, there's a high chance <laughs> we're 100% wrong. We're not wrong, but you never know. <laughs> never judge a book by its ingredients list. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Um, as always, uh, we are sponsored by This Week in Craft. Dot to be our head of head over to the website. Don't know what happened there. Head over to the website. This Week in Craft. Dot beer sent to the free weekly newsletter. Got all the craft beer news from your favourite breweries and that all important new beers list as well. This Week in Craft. Dot beer. We're also powered by Patreon. Head to Patreon. Dot com forward slash beer fridge podcast. Get exclusive content and some homebrew from the gents. Um, when they brew it and um, that'll be sent straight to your door go to patreon.com forward slash beer fridge podcast and show your support if you can't do that please feel free to push that follow button and hit the ding a ling a ling to be notified of all the latest episodes it helps us massively you do not know with all the algorithm and all that jazz it helps us get exposure for more people to listen to our gibberish so make sure you like, and follow, and share. And all that jazz. As always, on the Beer Fish Podcast, real beer, real breweries, real opinions. I'm Gavin, that's Calm, that's Gilroy, that's MD. And until next week, 